Good morning from the oldest continuously inhabited city in Europe, Plovdiv in Bulgaria. I thought I'd start off the video today by showing you what 40 pounds a night can get you here in Plovdiv. I'm staying at the Hotel Daffy, which is in the center of the old town. Here's a quick look at the bathroom. Huge bathtub there. And then if I flip around here quickly, you can see there's a desking area and then windows all around this extra large room. This one looking out from the corner of the block. See the Kapana district just out the window there. If I come around here, you can see this huge circular bed. Very comfortable, I've got to say. Over this side of the room, we've got a, a wardrobe for your belongings, a seating area, bit of a mess at the moment. Should have probably cleared up before I put the video on. And then out here, a small balcony. There we go. No room to sit, but certainly room to stand and just watch the world pass by. It's going to be about 24 degrees in Plovdiv today. It's already warming up. Debating whether or not to wear the old shorts. Right, I am going to head down there. There we go. There's the hotel. And I'm heading in this direction. Plovdiv was originally a Thracian settlement dating back to 6,000 years BCE. It was around the time of 1200 BCE that the settlements expanded and were renamed Evmolpia after a Thracian king. In 342 BCE, the Macedonians under Alexander the Great's father, Philip II, conquered the city and renamed it Philippopolis. However, it was the Romans that had the biggest impact on the city. They conquered it in 342 BCE and renamed it Trimontium. They expanded by enlarging the fortress, installing an aqueduct and a sewage system into the city, and also by building a huge stadium with a capacity for 30,000 people. So by the middle of the 7th century, a number of Bolga tribes had joined up and by the end of that century the first Bulgarian Empire was formed. Plovdiv was conquered by the Bulgarians in 812 and about 25 years later became part of Bulgaria. In 1371, the Ottomans invaded and ended up ruling here for five centuries until 1878, when Bulgaria was liberated by the Russo-Turkish War. But things are never that simple. And rather than being returned to Bulgaria, Plovdiv was named the capital of a new autonomous region called Eastern Rumelia. Thankfully, just seven years later, Eastern Rumelia was unified with Bulgaria with the proclamation happening right here in Plovdiv. At the end of the Second World War, Bulgaria fell into the Soviet Union's area of influence and under communism it became a more industrial city. That's up until 1989 when communism fell. These days Plovdiv has its sights set on becoming the cultural capital of Bulgaria. Their tourism slogan is come and see for yourself. So I did. I'm going to be spending two days here in Plovdiv Tomorrow I'm going to be trying my luck at hiking the seven hills around the city but today I'm going to spend the day in the Kapana district and also in the old town starting at the Roman Amphitheatre. 
So I've just arrived at the ancient Roman amphitheatre here in Plovdiv. According to their website, it was built in around about the year 90 of the first century, so it's over 1900 years old. And it is said to be one of the best preserved Roman amphitheatres in existence. So I'm going to head down now to the stage area and uh, take a look. So there are over 20 rows of marble seats here in the amphitheatre and during its heyday the theatre was used for theatrical performances of course but also gladiatorial and hunting games. What an amazing place. Apparently the amphitheater was rediscovered in the early 1970s after a landslide or a mudslide on the hill that it is positioned on the side of. It's a beautiful view of the city as well behind the Roman columns. Well, I've got to say a very unique place. I'm gonna head now back into the old town. I might pop back to the hotel as well to reapply some sun lotion. It's extremely hot out here. And uh, I didn't brave the shorts this morning. I put my jeans on instead. So I may even change into my shorts because I am sweating and I'm only standing around looking at an amphitheater at the moment. So uh, onwards. Right ahead of me is the Friday Mosque. We've arrived at a place called Roman Stadium Square. And it's called the Roman Stadium Square because right here underneath ground level is a 1900 year old Roman Stadium. This is just by the way, the end section. It's 240 meters long and 50 meters wide, but they can't excavate the rest of it because it is underneath their main high street. So to do that, they'd have to pretty much destroy all these buildings. So this is a model of the stadium that really illustrates how huge it is. You can see this section here at the end is the part that they've excavated. There's a Roman wall here which still stands and an aqueduct from Roman times that I believe only the foundations are there for now. And as I pull back a bit, you can see just how huge this stadium is. There we go. The vast majority of that is buried underneath Plovdiv High Street. So this is H&M and in their basement they have part of the Roman Stadium. So I'm going to go and see if I can take a look. So we're now in the Capana district, which is also known as the Trap. Called that because it's made up of lots of small streets that bend all over the place. And it's then hard to find your way around and out of the district. Lots of street art here as well. It's all legal. There's lots of competitions during festivals that are held here. And the winners get to add their art onto selected walls and property. So we're just entering now the old town of the city. There's lots of unique buildings around here. Roads are cobblestone and it's all very steep up and down built on a hill. So just down here there is a church behind this fortified wall. Apparently that's the oldest church in Plovdiv. And then just up here to the right is a museum. I'm gonna go and have a look in the garden. So this is one of the museums here in the old town. There's lots of them. This is quite a unique building. Tour guide said that a lot of people come to this garden to Iluk which in Bulgarian means to do 
very little, but to enjoy yourself. So I guess he means just coming and chilling out and relaxing and uh, not worrying too much about the time that passes by. I can't go inside the museum because you're not allowed to take photos or videos in there. But round here, there is a display of old carriages that used to be used in the city. That's about the best view I can get of the carriages. They're behind glass, which makes them hard to photograph with the sun behind me. There's the Kersham Inn gate. That still stands. There's a photo of it in the placard here. There we go. I have just walked to the top of a hill above the old town. It's a place called Nebet Tepe and it is the point from which the entire city of Plovdiv began, believe it or not. I'm gonna be starting here tomorrow morning when I attempt to hike the seven hills of Plovdiv, so join me for that one if you can. But for now, I think I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy some of this incredible scenery. the last three hours the weather forecast has been saying that in the next hour there's a hundred percent chance of rain but we haven't had a drop of rain yet suddenly there's thundering I saw lightning behind me a little while ago and I'm thinking it's probably not a good idea to be so high with these trees here right now so I think I may have to head back down into the old town and do some more exploring down there. Did you see that? Oh, oh, did you see that bolt of lightning? There's another one. Right, I'm heading down. I am out of here. I've made it back to the hotel. It's just starting to rain, so I timed that perfectly. I bought myself a Bulgarian beer, and I'm going to do a little bit of planning now here in the balcony whilst watching the lightning storm from the safety of my room. Ah. Good night. Good night.